back to geopolitical views. There's one elephant in the room talking about our legs. Uh, when you talk about European Union, you talk about NATO, you talk about the United Kingdom, you find, you know, there are a bunch of legs developing or whatever, a little bit of heft developing behind it. But the, but the joker in the bank, elephant in the room, you guessed it right. Russia and Putin. So we talk a little bit about that but before that. In a report, EU favors India over China, a selective partner and systemic rival, says Portugal. China rise a defining transformational trend, says external affairs minister. So you know you're really, really getting a lot of a lot of uh, ballast behind your sails, right? Here too, Japan too seeks EU's presence in Indo-Pacific. That's interesting. Japan has already done that with the United Kingdom. Okay. This is the another important one, going on what I had said about UK. UK posts liaison officer at Indian Navy facility monitoring threats. Interesting. Fra I mean, the a problem with France and Germany continues to similar. France won't align with US or China on Indo-Pacific. That's fine. As long as France stays in the Indo-Pacific, acknowledges China as a competitor, aligns with India, hey, it really doesn't need to align with the United States. Either way, it's aligned against China, whether it does it with us or does it with the United States, right? Isn't it, folks? But here we go. Biden and Putin. For now, US and Russia president, presidents deserve credit for trying to detox a relationship that had become so poisonous. This is the way Indians look at it, right? For Putin and Russia, respect and recognition are critical and provide the basis for a productive, for Putin and Russia. Respect and recognition are critical and provide the basis for a productive engagement with the new American administration. I think Biden understands that. Because what he's trying to do is something like this, is something what Edward Luce writes. Biden's, Biden's pivot to China. What does it say, right? This is what I've been saying for a long time. Yet, there was a purpose to Biden's flattery. Some call it a reverse Henry Kissinger. After Richard Nixon's renowned national security advisor who took trips to Beijing in the early 70s to capitalize on the Sino-Soviet split, China eventually broke away from the Soviet bloc. Beijing is a senior partner today. The longer-term hope is to drive a wedge between Russia and China. The more Biden treats Russia with respect as a great power, which is what Putin craves, the easier it will be for him to loosen Russia from China's embrace, says here. Such an approach means downplaying Biden's democracy versus autocracy, framing America uh, framing America would instead play on Russia's anxiety about being treated as a little brother by China. And let me tell you that, folks. That is a whole bunch of anxiety brewing with Putin, right? And this is what you must hear. It's what business world Holman W.J. Jenkins Jr. writes. Why Biden is meeting with Putin? Why Biden is meeting with Putin? Exposing Mr. Putin's financial in entanglements again tops the list of steps the US always seems to be holding in reserve, never acting on. The entanglements are even well hidden but never receive the imprimatur of US intelligence. The one-time son-in-law's overnight rise to billionairehood, the large offshore wealth of a sealess sellers known to be close to Mr. Putin, the Black Sea Palace that reputed, reputedly cost $1 billion, the disappearance of $93 million in food money way back when Mr. Putin was deputy mayor at St. Petersburg. The U.S. has tried to keep Mr. Putin's non-financial street trust too with a notable experience. So basically, it's happening at all ends, right? So it's not as if only America has, uh, Russia has his uh, 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 secrets about America. America probably has far more secrets, right? It says, at hand is the possibility that, that, that any time it cares to open the files, the U.S. could make Mr. Putin a pariah. He could no longer represent Russia's interests abroad. His ability to serve the needs to, of his crony network might be severely downgraded. He might be seen as a net liability. Mr. Putin is letting the US know he holds it responsible for ensuring that he doesn't end up like Gaddafi, whose overthrow, frantic flight, and roadside murder is said to have strongly affected Mr. Putin. This is the important part thing to remember. Yeah, so Putin, the meeting went of wealth. Putin calls for improved ties with the US. Okay. Big meat makes small gains. Biden and Putin agreed to send envoys back to post, hold arms, control, and cyber security, cyber security talks. Okay. Then he says, Biden and Putin agreed to resume arms talk, return envoys, and pragmatic summit. Devastating point. Well, that's true. Russia game for more talks with the United States, right? Then you have what we call it from our side, the New Delhi trilemma. It says. India's best case scenario is that America and Russia feel better about each other so that Moscow has less reason to quote Beijing. And that exactly is what the United States is also attempting to do. 
Indeed, for Washington too, a Beijing-Moscow combo is something to be avoided. It makes sense for America to keep its strategic focus squarely on China. Russia isn't strong enough to be a global disruptor. China is. But India must not get, may not get what it wants. US-Russia and US-China jousting may sharpen the trilemma for it. I don't think so. I think India will get what it wants. The best may be the only way out is to seriously expand India's economy. If India can grow at 8% annually over the next 10 years, the trilemma with the... So there's, obviously, there's no argument with that. But still, that does not mean India cannot get what it wants. It absolutely can. In Russia and Arctic, a very cold war. This is the other one that's developing and important for India to take note too. One goal of the Russian build-up is to seize the day economically as the ocean thaws. Climate change enab enables the appearances of new economic possibilities. Moscow asserts its Arctic plan and uh, envisions a new Klondike, Klondike. As the ice melts, the United States is preparing and India also should be looking at that. And here too, how this Greenland election could affect China and your next cell phone. He says, sitting on vast untapped reserves of uranium and rare earth minerals, Greenland holds the key to massive wealth. Any wonder that Trump wanted to buy it, right? The remote snow-covered island sent a clear message to global mining interests this week when voters handed a rare victory to Intuit at a, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this, a democratic socialist party with a 34-year-old leader and an environmental bent. He says, the community had campaigned on halting what was on track to become a massive mining operation in southern Greenland led by an Australian company and backed by Chinese investment. The election results are a blow to China, which mines more than 70% of the world's rare earth minerals and hopes to maintain, and hopes to maintain its dominance as demands so. so here, this is going to be, folks, a huge play. The Greenland and the Arctic for the United States, for Europe, well, not for Europe, but the United States and Russia. China wanted to get into Greenland. India needs to keep its options open here too, folks. Far and wide, let's just look what's ha at what's happening uh, in our region. All things are not all hunky-dory. Firstly here, blast outside Hafiz Saeed's Lahore resident kills three. This is kind of interesting, right? And it's another, you know, Imran Khan, Dimwit, usual. No need for nukes once Kashmir issue is resolved, Pakistan PM. Pakistan's nuclear arsenal is simply a deterrent to protect the country, okay? So I'm glad, I'm hoping he doesn't suggest that there's no need for nuclear nukes once Kashmir issues resolved. He's not, I hope he doesn't think that India will get rid of their, its nukes because India's nukes are essentially not really Pakistan, it's more about China, right? And we all know. Pakistan again seeks US intervention on Kashmir issue. That is a stretch too far for him. He ain't going to get it. And especially because, you know, he's, He's a hypocrite, right? It's a hypocrite as far as Kashmiri Muslims are concerned. Oh, he's really concerned. But when it comes to the Uyghurs, Pakistan PM refuses to acknowledge China's repression of Uyghurs. I complete, I'm completely against arms. I always have been the moment that is aware. That's all now. So, Uyghurs, no question. But here's the conflict. The army is not a verse. The Pakistani army is not a verse for two giving bases. There's a lot of talk about it. But never again. Imran Khan, Imran on CIA using Pakistani places. There's going to be a huge blowback because Taliban has also said that not a single country, not a single army is outside its target if American bases are allowed. Right? The other player, right, Erdogan, because of NATO, also a player now, as I've told you, in Afghanistan because it basically secures the Kabul, Kabul uh, airport, which is a critical part that a lot of people know. It and it's also hosted a number of uh, uh, conferences in Turkey for uh, Afghanistan becomes a player, but he says, David Gardner says, Erdogan's tantrum is a sign of weakness. He says, cocooned by courtiers, just like our guys, after pushing aside independent aids, again, again, similar story here, Erdogan has almost lost the ability to set coherent policy. Instead, after losing control of most of Turkey's great cities, including Istanbul and Ankara in 2019's local elections, he concentrates on throwing political red meat to his Islamist and ultra-nationalist -national electorate. I wonder whether there's something similar happening in India too, right? A hallowed out AKP is more like an opposition than a ruling party on the cusp of its third decade in power. This is a demonstration of power, but also of vulnerability. Okay? But in Afghanistan, the long march of the Taliban as letter from Washington Seema. So we've got to keep watching those people. Like look, I'm getting the feeling now. Civil war is possible as also the United States may delay its withdrawal, right? Long march of Taliban. The ground situation is deteriorating fast as the Taliban creep towards provincial capitals. 
The attacks have intensified in brutality and frequency since Biden's April an announcement to withdraw all troops by September 11th. And here's what we have. Afghan militias to support government. This is a sign of a possibility of a civil war, right? India obviously has opened up its cards a little bit more. Qatar invoices India's officials met Taliban. Jay Shankar points to no dip in Afghan violence and he's absolutely right, folks, okay? India has been in touch with Taliban. Qatar official reveals quiet meet in Doha. Afghanistan needs double peace within and around India. He's specifically talking, I guess, about Pakistan, right? As US allies leave Afghanistan, Taliban makes stri rapid strikes, says Abhinash Mohani. But what he says is, whatever may be the assessment of the Taliban of their capabilities, the government of Afsir Ghani, Ashraf Ghani is unlikely to fall easily this time around. This time around, Pakistan would also be wary of extending support to them. In no, ca in, in no case, the world should allow a bunch of obstructionist mullahs armed to teeth to capture power and heap further miseries on the people of Afghanistan. And people of Afghanistan must resist. This is Taliban takeover of another key of gas, Afghan district of US, uh, ahead of US to pull out. China warns its citizens to leave Afghanistan. China also in trouble and very worried. They don't want a caliphate right next to it, right? It's troubled region. Taliban's power pursuit has led to Afghan uncertainty, says Shringla, absolutely right. The real spoiler in Kabul, if you had to guess right. First, is it's got to be Pakistan's foreign minister. First, he sought to absolve the Taliban for increasing violence in Afghanistan at a time when the Taliban has stepped up its offensive to take advantage of weak Kabul government. And then, so what Mr. Qureshi's statement revealed is that Pakistan is not interested in peace, progress or development in Afghanistan, nor is it interested in shedding its anti-India nationalism. There is a grouping in there led by Qureshi, right? Rise in Taliban funding, fundraising on Pakistan soil puts them under the pump again on the FF before the FATF meet for. That's happening in the region. US to join three nations in Middle East naval exercise amid tensions with Iran. Well, that was happening as you saw. Uh, Rakesh Sood writes, theocracy and polls the Iran model. So it's Rasi, Raisi, a hardliner who wins, but he says, but America thinks with hardliners not dominant, the US expects the internal bickering will end. Meanwhile, talks last month between the Saudis and Iranians in Iraq have raised hopes of movement on Yemen. A change of guard in Israel may provide the breathing space in Lebanon and Gaza. The sands in West Asia may be shifting, though ever so slightly. And while that's happening, folks, this is important, right? Stop using our friendship to win votes, Emirates to Netanyahu. So Emirates will play ball, obviously continue to play ball with or without Netanyahu. And here's another one. Saudi Aramco chairman may join RIL board. With all this flux, this also takes a critical position, folks. And on our other side, on our other side, a border, northern border, Oli rolls out new theory on yoga origins claim. It claims it was born in Nepal, Sita, Ram, all going the south and India better get its act together. Oli claims yoga originated in Nepal, because this is what is happening, Nepal, SC ousts most of PM Oli's cabinet, he's in trouble, and at the same time you have China upset with Nepal over vaccine rate leak. Apparently they're charging an astronomical sum, $10 per dose, man. They're rip off bloody artists, these Chinese men. So that's what they've been doing to everybody, including a United Arab Emirates and Bahrain and all the other suckers, right? Myanmar. India was forced to do this. India abstains from vote on UNGM Myanmar's resolution. India, Russia, China abstain. We got to be on the same side, but we got to play a different game to Russia and China, right? So India's got a problem, right? 500 crossover from Myanmar to Mizoram, including one of the guys that they have. And there seems to be India abstains from voting on UN's Myanmar. That's important, it says. And uh, what, that, what was happening in... Uh, 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 we have started and declared war, Myanmar rebel militia says. So here the civil war also happening. And like I said, things in, in the United in the, in Doha were quite hectic for Jay Shankar. Jay Shankar discusses Afghanistan with Qatari leaders, US special envoy. Jay Shankar, key US official for Afghanistan, meet in Qatar. This region, all of India, Indo-Pacific, is in a churn, folks. India needs to get its domestic and economic in order. It has all the necessary legs it needs to get to the next level. Jai Hind.